in the last decade, we've seen we've seen more droughts um, than have been typical in, in previous spans of times. Like, you know, just a few years ago in the Midwest, there was a huge loss of the corn crop because of drought. Now in California, they've been in the depths of a drought that, you know, the magnitudes of which haven't been seen in a long time. They've been in it for three years, um, and there's already places where there's no water left for public use. Uh, it's becoming a bigger problem, and that could only increase with time, so we have to do something about it. So the idea is to try and take a few different crop species and try to understand how each one responds to drought stress at the genetic and epigenetic level and to try to compare between them and see what are the common themes in drought stress response among crop plants. So one of the fascinating things, it turns out, is that plants can actually remember being exposed to drought, okay? Within a given lifetime and between generations as well. So for example, if you take a plant and you expose those individuals to a drought stress and then you water them again and then you have a, a, a normal plant of the same age that's never been exposed to drought and now you expose both of those plants to drought, the one that's seen drought before is more resistant to it, okay? And the resistance gets stronger with each time it's exposed again, right? And it turns out that the progeny, the offspring of that plant, are actually more resistant as well, at least for a few generations. So it's a trait that seems to be that the plants actually can somehow store the memory that they've been exposed to drought and use that to be better prepared for it the next time it comes around. If we think we can find the core changes that all plants make to their metabolism and physiology in response to drought stress, those are gonna be the things that are important that might, we might be able to tweak in order to make them more resistant, for example. As we understand how plants work fundamentally, right, and how they respond to changing environments, we might be able to, or hopefully we'll be able to, um, change them in certain ways, either through traditional breeding methods, genetic modification, or a combination of both in order to make them not only more resistant to stress, but also hopefully higher yielding, more nutritious, so it's really important, I think, in that regard, in terms of meeting food demand, in order to make plants that are robust to changes in the environment, and also that are gonna yield more and be more nutritious per pound.